Welcome back to Cars and Guitars. The year is 1954 and in August, Fender is about to drop a brand new design, the Stratocaster. Welcome to Cars and Guitars, because if you're going to have an expensive hobby, you may as well have two. No, I don't have a 1954 Stratocaster in here because I'm not a rich dentist. What I do have to celebrate the 70th birthday of the Stratocaster is one from my birth year, 1986. Birthday guitars are cool. It's nice to have something that's as old as you are. And honestly, this is in better condition than me. I'm probably comparable to the case. Finding a guitar from 1986 isn't that hard, but I didn't want just any old guitar from 86. I wanted a USA made Stratocaster where the neck, body and pots all date to 1986. This doesn't sound like it'd be that difficult, but 1986 was a very transitional year for Fender. The company had been sold and bought. They had just moved their manufacturing facility to Corona, California. So they were only making a handful of guitars every day. Numbers vary, but it could have been as little as five guitars a day. And the first ones they started making were their brand new American vintage reissue models. The new Fender wanted to change the public's perception after the 70s era of somewhat poor quality and questionable design changes. That's by the purists anyway, I absolutely love 70s strats. So they set out to relaunch with two reissue models from the golden era, a 1957 and a 1962 strat. I said before I wanted a USA made Strat with a neck, body and pots all date to 1986. A unicorn in itself, but what makes this even unicornier is that it's one of a handful of factory era guitars. They were only assembling 57 and 62 reissue guitars and this 62 reissue body and pick guard got a 57 reissue neck on the factory assembly line by mistake. I've seen maybe two others pop up over the years, so not a lot of them out there. Let's start at the top and work our way down and we'll take a look at this unicorn. Headstock is indicative of a maiden Corona in 86. This headstock has a slight curve on the top of the headstock here and the curve on the bottom near the Fender logo is slightly more pronounced. There were leftover decals used into 86, but this is a second batch one. You can tell because the ends of the E's are slightly rounded and the decal is cut closer to the lettering, not just the you know, big old cutout around the whole thing. Another reason I bought this one is you just know it's good by the wear on the fretboard. Somebody absolutely plied this thing, but they looked after it as well. V stamped neck plate for vintage. You can't take these things off the serial number, so we're not even gonna bother. Here on the base of the neck, you can see the handwritten date as well. This was the style at the time, July 25th, 1986. About eight weeks before my actual birthday. All the bodies were older. Neck pocket in this era didn't have a date stamp or anything. That didn't start to appear till around 88. I've done a video on a sweet 88 Strat I picked up last year. Check that out. I'll put a link or something up here. Anyway, all the older bodies and the first few made in Corona had these extra two little holes in the neck pocket as well. So with no body stamps or anything, how can we tell this body is from 86? Well, it has the sharper Corona styled contours. So it's a bit sharper, it's a bit, anyway. This points to it being one of the first bodies made in the new factory and not leftover parts from the old plant. Let's get this pickguard off and have a look underneath. Before we get under here, three ply white, black, white pickguard, three way switch and master volume and two tones. Just what you'd expect from a 62 issue. Oh, we got short leads. It's a bit hard to see under here, but we've got CTS pots, 137 code, and 86 for the year, and a 21 and 23 for the week. So what's that? Late May, 
No, mate. We've got a big old orange capacitor, likely a leftover from the Fullerton plant, and black bottom pickups with black and white cloth wiring. You'll also sound to hear the large aluminum shielding sheet that covers the entire underside. 57 reissue guards only had this under the pots. Nice look under the pickguard as well. No swimming pool route here, just three single coils. And interestingly, the red in the three-tone sunburst does not continue under the pickguard. Did they forget? Was it deliberate? Was it the same person who was mistakenly assembling these things, painting them? We don't know. Before we flip it over, it has the period correct stamped saddles with fender stamped into them both in the same direction as they did for many years. Around 89, this changes and they alternate the direction of the fender engraving. Backplate, I'm not sure if this is original or if it's a 57 reissue one because it's only single ply, but let's get this off and take a peek inside. It does look like someone's had this off for most of its life because of the wear under here, so there's a good chance the original one got lost and this is a replacement. Maybe not. No dates or anything either, but that's to be expected. Looks like someone touched up the ground wire though or whoever done it in the factory was having a really bad day. Probably the same guy that was painting and assembling. There's a lot of polishing compound in here as well. Looks like the inside of Charlie Sheen's house. Before we hear how it sounds, I'll look inside the case. Got original vibrato bar. We've got some of, this is a new guitar paperwork. There's trim springs and screws and some other things and stuff. Just goes to show whoever owned this in the past absolutely played the shit out of it. But they loved it and looked after it as well. A lot like I have been and will continue to do for well, at least the rest of my life. Let's hear how it sounds. Might even play, a, play an 80s tune. I love this thing. It was fun hunting for it. It's a beautiful guitar. And with nothing else left to say, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and stay tuned for plenty more.